Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing piston ring assembly and adding bearings. Look out! Since we have the engine back from the machine shop now, we can start assembling the parts like the uh, pistons and the uh, really the pistons need to go together before the crank goes in here. We could flip this over, put the bearings in, and then uh, put the crank in, but we're going to go ahead and assemble the connecting rods and the uh, pistons first. So if you've done this before, it's old hat to you. If you haven't done this before, this is what you get. Piston rings, and there's a reason why they are in uh, different colors, different color bags. This one actually says first. This one says oil. And this one says second. And that all corresponds to your first ring groove, your second ring groove, and then your oil rings go down here. They even come with a set of destructions. So you're basically putting these in the ring grooves and you'll want to space them out uh, a particular distance. I like to go 180. I'll show you that as we do it. This happens to be where I bought uh, the pistons or the piston rings online. The whole engine kit I bought online. DNJ. Do not judge. These are uh, your part number. They're steel rings and these are 30 over which means the cylinder has been bored in the engine block 30 thousandths over standard. Therefore the pistons have to be 30 thousandths over. That's what the 0.75 means. And you've got your direction for which way the piston faces the front of the engine. And these have an extra dish area here because they are uh, pistons for a supercharged engine. Here we go. Now you want to keep these separate, some kind of system so that you do not get them mixed up. You don't want to put the second ring on the first slot or the first one on the second. None of that nonsense. So what I like to do, put all these on. I'm sorry. I'm going to start with the uh, oil rings, the bottom. I'm going to put all those on first and then put the second one on, all of them, and then put the third one on, all of them. That way we don't get any uh, confused. How can you not like this company? Please install spacer gap facing, facing piston skirt. Aww. So here we go. There it is, just that easy. We're done. Not quite. Okay, you gotta put the, now the gaps here, you wanna keep them offset. Like there's a gap right here. You do not want these to line up with these. You wanna keep those offset. Not as much as possible, positively offset. Otherwise, you're going to have oil going through there. And that's not a good thing. Another oil ring, so I'll put this one at the gap. Over on this side. So 
sorry about the insect invasion. For some reason, it's really bad this year. Okay. Cool. You're going to be in my video. Honey, dinner. Two girls in my video. I like it. I managed to get one. Okay, that one should be good to go. I gotta make sure it's uh, seated right. But I'm gonna go have dinner. Taco night! Here's a cap. The other gap is here. I'm gonna move it down here a little bit. So we got a good space. All of the uh, oil rings are in, the gap spacing that they're talking about here. Please install spacer gap facing the piston skirt. They want the gap in your spacer ring right here. And then your gaps for your oil control rings, one over here, one over on this side. And that's done all six of them. One thing I like about these rods, these have an H-beam design. Pretty cool. Good size main cap. And full floating wrist pins as opposed to pressed. Pressed in pins. So all race buddy all the time. Hopefully this engine will actually live. Now the next thing I'm going to do is Install ring number two. This one says second. It'll go in this ring here, this uh, groove here. And it's actually got a, uh, a marking on it. Right here, C2 piston ring, stamped. So you want the stamped portion to be facing up. So there's nothing on the bottom whatsoever, but on the top there's a DNJ 96.5 and a 75 looks like 1.5 next to it. Anyway, these numbers are going to go facing up. And again, I will put all of these in before moving on to the next ring. And it's that easy. That's how easy these go in. Don't break one, whatever you do, you'll be buying a whole nother set of rings. One thing I am going to have to check is ring end gap, the gap here, to make sure that it's uh, what it's supposed to be. I don't know exactly where it's supposed to be yet, but I will find out. And uh, if it's too small, not enough space in between the ends, then I will file one side till I get it to where it's supposed to be.
you do, don't force anything. So you can break one of these fairly quickly. And you'll clock these as well to get them uh, get the ring gaps away from the second ring and the first ring, which I'll be putting on momentarily. is the first one. It says first. And you'll want the stamped portion. Yep, these are all stamped. DNJ 96.5, 7.5, and 1.2. One of those numbers has to correspond with ring end gap, I'm sure. Okay, that's all six of those. Box is done. Now we have Do Not Jangle engine bearings. These are the connecting rod bearings. These will ride on the crankshaft. These should be standard, which means uh, the crank was in good shape and uh, it didn't need to be turned. Probably just got a polish job. careful with these, try not to bend them. Now, Pay attention to how this comes apart because you have an offset here and an offset here. So these go just like that. One offset on one side, one on the other. So you just take your engine bearing with a little offset in it. You match it up with the offset and the connecting rod. There you go. These don't have a top or a bottom or a left or a right or anything like that. Just make sure everything's clean when you put it together. And Since this isn't going into the block right now, it's not being installed, I'm going to go ahead and put these guys back together. And 
and that's how they'll sit until I get the crank installed in the block. Whenever you hear that somebody has spun a bearing, that happens with this. These offsets in here are made to keep this locked in place so it does not spin. And if it does spin, you're done. You're, this could very well get welded right to your crank and this ends up going through the side of the engine block and it's ugly. You don't want that to happen. So now I'll go ahead and finish these. Be right back. Okay, all six pistons are done. Got the connecting rod bearings in. They're set up properly. You can get this flipped around, but don't do that. And uh, all of the piston rings are on. And before I install these into the actual block or the cylinders, I'll go ahead and clock these so the gaps are properly spaced away from each other. According to what my assembly book says. If all else fails, read all the instructions. Okay, with the help of the insect invasion, I can now install the main caps.